fed up with this world. world. Yeah. Hi, Mark. <laughs> All right. Lisa. Um, you want to tear me apart, Lisa? Lisa. <laughs> All right. Are you ready to do this? No, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not. Oh, hey, Robbie. of On a Couch Talking Sports. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. We are back together again. We're back, baby. I'm Robbie, oh, yeah. as always. This is Kyle. Kyle is doing much better, as you can tell, getting over his uh, brush with car. Um, so we are back, <laughs> like I said, in a car, ready to talk some sports. How are you doing, buddy? Doing okay. Uh, yeah, honestly, uh, better than expected. Um, yeah, the healing process is going uh, pretty smoothly. And um, I'm actually back at work now, so uh, that, that's a plus as well. Very <laughs> nice. Very, yeah, so we're very happy to, to see you better and to be back in cars talking about sports. And uh, <laughs> we kind of wanted to take an interesting approach to tonight's episode because obviously, you know, we are in the middle of... Uh, of a pandemic, which yes. has been going on basically, you know, really since March was when sort of the it really started to grip grip us as a nation. And so, obviously, sports as we know them have looked a lot different from March till now, as we sit here um, in October. And so, what we wanted to do is we kind of wanted to compare and contrast a little bit in a normal non-pandemic <laughs> year. <laughs> What you know, what sports would look like in sort of that type of year compared mm -hmm. to what they look like now, just sort of looking at you know how things have really been changed on a number of fronts. Um, we're gonna sort of stick to the the four sort of major sports, you know, mm -hmm. sort of baseball, basketball, hockey, and football, um, just because those are sort of the ones that we tend to pay the most attention to, you know. Yeah, I don't even being, think they talked much about how they're going to do track and all of those sports. But yeah, so it's... I it's, imagine it being that hard, but... <laughs> yeah, it's so... Uh, but we're going to sort of focus on that, and we'll start, you know, with uh, with football, because mm. <laughs> in a normal year, football actually would be going on right now in a yes. normal year, and it is going on right now, even in a pandemic year. However, it would look a lot different. You would mm. have... Fan, in a normal year, you'd have fans in the stands, obviously. Um, all of the like college conferences would have started at the exact same time, as opposed to now where like some conferences started in September, now some are starting up in October, mm -hmm. November, just kind of like going on all different types of schedules. Um, mm -hmm. And like the NFL is kind of going along schedule wise like normally however obviously you know some teams have limited fans some teams have no fans whereas like i said in every other year there would be full you know full stadiums and you know just sort of full speed ahead yeah pretty much it's a. Uh... yeah it, you're right i think i think out of all the sports to be honest i think football definitely has been affected the most especially because you know the whole thing about coronavirus is it's like, you know, it's, you're supposed to stay six feet away from each other, but in football, football is a contact sport, so it's it's a lot trickier, I feel like, out of all the sports to do. Um, but, you know, at, at the end of the day, um, I guess it's like when they, you know, when you hear about, like, when they're going to shoot a movie or TV show, and even, um, like, you kind of have to be in, like, a certain kind of bubble in a way. Um, and I know they do like a lot of testing and stuff like that, but you know, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty hard to, I feel like, uh, maintain that, especially in football because football, it, it's all contact. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't six, you can't play football with a six foot distance. You, you can't socially can't. distance in football. So yeah. <laughs> it's, it's impossible. And so, and I think, you know, unfortunately, you know, while, you know, leagues are giving it, they're trying, you know, you are sort of seeing some amount of, uh, mm -hmm. of cases there, you know, on in the NFL and in college and so you know they're 
they're making a go of it though which i give them a lot of credit for but definitely has not gone off you know without a hitch like you know like mm -hmm. it would in any you know in any normal season and you know you really wouldn't and the yeah. other thing is like and i want sort of two points so like one is the I think what's been most noticeable this year around here is actually on the high school front because there actually is no high school football going on right yeah. now in the state. <laughs> whereas in a normal year we'd be kind of like right in the middle of high school football mm -hmm. season. So that has definitely been you know has been a, a big change or a big difference this fall in terms of locally. And yeah. the other thing is that you know yeah there are injuries in football. Obviously football is a very physical game which can lead mm -hmm. to lead to a certain amount of uh, risk. However, yeah. in a normal year, you don't see, obviously, you know, games being postponed just because mm -hmm. players on one team, player on a team got injured. You know, they missed the game, but the game goes on. But for yeah. COVID, like, some of these games have actually had to be postponed, like, moved around because mm -hmm. they have to do contact tracing and extra testing and all that good stuff. Yeah. It's just, it, you know, it's just a complete complete different feel to it than it would <laughs> like I said any normal year it, it's a lot it's a uh, it's a lot that we have to keep track of um, and and we're gonna I'm, I'm sure we're, we're gonna bring this up with the other ones as well but for football it's definitely there's just definitely there's a lot of it and and honestly I, I actually I actually um you know if you can pull it off and great but I, I've also respected the teams that just decided to pull out that they, they, they were like you know what let's just not risk it especially the college and high school teams it's just like you know what let's just and I, as much as I want to see football, I really want to see football again and, you know, and back in full form and everything. But, you know, at the end of the day, you really got to assess assess your limits. You know, you really got to see what works. And if it doesn't work, then, you know what, at that work, point, don't do work, it. Work, 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 work. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> random, so. random musical interlude there. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, speaking of other yeah. sports, definitely moving on from football, mm -hmm. um, another one of the sports that was you know definitely affected it's interesting because like football mm -hmm. like they kind of started in the same time period that they normally would like i said and kind of have yeah. been still going but like the other three major sports really were impacted big time mm -hmm. by <laughs> uh by this pandemic and really had their sort of time frames thrown all through the loop and i you know yeah, a lot of so delays. we just so happen to have a hockey puck here yeah um so i guess we'll go to hockey next because like hockey normally in a normal year mm -hmm. their season would have ended like in june you know early to yeah. mid june with the stanley cup finals and then they would actually be gear like right around this time they'd be gearing up to start next the next season you know the uh the the next year's season that is definitely not the case this yeah. year uh, because obviously from march <laughs> through what was it july there was no hockey they uh obviously um you know had to put the season on pause and so they finally were able to start up in july with no fans in a bubble in Toronto and Edmonton. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, a, that's another big difference. Obviously, you know, for all those playoff games and all that good stuff, you would see, you know, thousands of fans packed in there, uh, you know, Rockets crowds and home arenas and all, mm -hmm. all the good stuff. Nope, this year they basically went through from, like, July through October with their, uh, their bubble format, which just concluded a few weeks ago, which basically means that the hmm. NHL season, or the, the next season, the 20, what well, would have been the 2020, 2021 season, is now really not going to be starting until, I, get, I I think I've heard, like, after the first of the year, because so, oh, okay. so they can give the players <laughs> sort of a, an off season, go through, you know, free agency and the draft and all that good stuff, yeah. um, and preseason before they start back up again so definitely you know, just just such a big difference from from what uh from what you would normally be seeing around this time of year when it comes to to pro hockey and even you know college hockey while well, college hockey you know basically just ended in march and didn't start back up yeah. again their start of their season is kind of being you know sort of messed with as well to start this this mm -hmm. upcoming season because of everything it, it was a lot because no, uh normally it's funny because i feel like at this point we probably already would have had like maybe at least an episode or two of, of maybe like a babson game or something like that or like well, a, it probably would be it probably would be 
<clears throat> It'd probably be like the preseason. Yeah, I think the like the college season really doesn't start to like closer to November. Oh, okay. Um, so it would have been next month, yeah. But uh, the NHL season would be like in you know would be in preseason right now or like mm -hmm. just starting up, you know, pretty close to the regular season. So yeah, yeah it's... it definitely it's a different feel to it this year, having had <laughs> literally the Stanley Cup finals add like three weeks ago or like a month ago. Yeah, it's so strange, you're right. It's just like all this like I don't know. I mean, you know, like obviously, you know, they they did what they had to do, but um I feel like kind of now they're in this point where they're kind of really because it's the first like serious like you know pandemic we're dealing with like since yeah. like influenza back in uh what early 1900s and we were not uh we were not around for that <laughs> yeah right so it's kind of like you know with all the different technology going on it's like they're kind of like doing things like i feel like they're taking it like literally week by week even day by day just yeah. kind of like really assessing like okay what do we need to do what are the rule new rules we need to set maybe how how much of the old rules can we keep at this point <laughs> and just like it's just you know it's, it's, it's yeah. a lot of change that they gotta deal sure. with but um you know I'm, I'm sure they'll find a way i'm sure um i mean i, I don't know with hockey with hockey it's it's very interesting it's it's definitely less contact than football but there, there's still a good amount of contact as well so you know, as long as they're aware of that, as long as they understand, you know, uh, how the sport is played, and I'm, I'm sure they'll find a way around it, so. Yeah, no, it'll just be very interesting to see, you know, what, you know, how things work out, you know, as we sort of get yeah. into the, the winter time, you know, and what leagues decide to do what, you know, when it comes to the college and the, mm -hmm. the pro game, definitely, uh, like I said, just, to, you know, unique, because obviously, you know, like Kyle said, we'd be starting to sort of prepare to you know, go to college games and, you know, yeah. sort of the full crowd and stuff like that. I think, I mean, I think right off the bat last season, Kyle and I went to, like, a Bentley game in, like, mm -hmm. in November, I think it was. Yeah, that was you know, Like, early November, which was a actually lot of... where I uh, got this uh, wonderful yeah. fuck over here, so... I well, I think kinda... that was from, a, like, a year, a couple years ago. No, that this was last year. Was this? Did we get two pucks? Just one. Um, well, I got one. I think you got one maybe a couple of years ago. But oh yeah, that's right. I think I kept that one and you got that one. So. Yeah, this is one of the practice ones. I remember it was just like flying around and then it just one landed like right next to our seat and I was like, oh, I might as well keep this one. So. But uh, yeah, no. So that I think that's the thing is like, like you said, um, <clears throat> yeah, just definitely like I said, just very different. Yeah. Very different and uh, same thing with uh, basketball too as well oh, definitely yeah, yeah. uh no march so like usually like you know back in march there would have been march madness mm -hmm. uh you know the ncaa basketball tournament which there was none of this year it got canceled mm -hmm. you know obviously because of the pandemic and then mm -hmm. you know they would be sort of starting to you know sort of gear up for their their upcoming season with you know fans and all that but now it's like again it's just kind of a question of you know who's going to play one and all that good stuff and the nba kind of like the nhl mm -hmm. you know they uh you know basically <clears throat> had to put their season on pause from march through what was it mm -hmm. july yeah or whatever so you know their playoffs they they would have been finishing up in june you know with fans and with you know home arenas and all that good stuff and so mm -hmm. they had to go to a bubble in orlando <laughs> with no fans and uh you know, just a very interesting setup, and they didn't get done till literally like within the last week or two. So they're not going to be starting their regular season up until you know probably, you know, at the absolute earliest, maybe December. Yeah. Um, probably oh, right. closer to the first of the year. So just again, just sort of throws the whole schedule. Kind of like with hockey, mm -hmm. as we were talking about, it just throws the whole schedule off. Yeah, that's true. Um, <clears throat> And the thing about um, basketball and hockey, though, and especially, ba well, especially basketball, you know, when they were finishing the uh, season, I feel like from, you know, from starting the new season, I feel like at least they have a pretty, they have they have a, a decent idea. You know, it's funny because you compare, like, uh, basketball and hockey to, like, football because football um, is just dealing with all these, like, this is the first season that they've really dealt with, like, yeah. all these new guidelines, rules, and everything like that, whereas, um... <clears throat> Whereas, like, hockey and basketball, you know, after their their last season that they've, you know, f done, f finished the playoffs for, at least I feel like this time they can go into the new season with, with kind of, like, they, they kind of have, they've been through that already, if you will. So, yeah. 
at least maybe they'll have like it'll help them kind of in that regard and it remains can, and it remains yeah. to be <laughs> seen for hockey and basketball you know what next season will look like you know whether or not mm -hmm. they'll be in home arenas again or if it'll be you mm -hmm. know a bubble situation and a lot a lot remains to be seen that's for sure so obviously you know a lot a lot more questions and answers as we sort of look ahead to the upcoming basketball and hockey seasons yeah and, and like they can kind of take what the, what what really worked you know in the previous season that they just finished and they can take what really worked and what didn't work and kind of like i feel like maybe come back into it with like a maybe a, a better more fresh fresher you know approach to it so absolutely and then obviously the the last sport that we have yet to touch on is the sport of baseball, mm -hmm. um, which again, you know, was right in spring training when this all sort of kicked off. And oh, yeah. Usually they mm -hmm. would have, you know, sort of wrapped up <clears throat> spring training late March, begun the regular season, played regular season, you know, per normal. But they obviously were off from March until, again, July. July, yeah. <laughs> um, now, the thing about the MLB was that they were able to play in their home ballparks yeah. this year, however, uh, with no fans, obviously, which was uh, obviously yeah, yeah. a big difference. And then for the playoffs, they're actually like doing sort of these bubble playoffs where like, mm -hmm. you know, they have different series in sort of centralized locations as opposed to a normal year when you would have the MLB playoffs in, you know, the home team's ballpark. So if you know all yeah. the fans, the one thing I will say is actually for um, these last couple rounds of the playoffs and for the World Series, they actually have been having fans in the ballparks. Oh, okay. uh, for because they've been playing in um, in Texas, and so oh. they've actually have had fans. Uh, not obviously not the uh, the sold out crowds that we're used to. You know, yeah, it's no. very <laughs> very minimum capacity. Yeah. Uh, but you are seeing sort of fans slowly starting to come back in the ballpark so yeah that was about as close to normal and I use the term loosely because in a normal year you wouldn't have playoff series being played at neutral sites mm. so yeah. uh, but it's just very interesting like I said just that you know that you know baseball <clears throat> came I would say the closest except for football I guess. Oh, football yeah. And baseball has sort of come the closest to a normal, a normal season because yeah. baseball, you know, they were able to play this year in their home ballparks, you know, for the regular season and all that. So, but uh, yeah, definitely, it still it looked a lot different, you know, with no fans and a shortened season and all that, all that good <laughs> stuff. Yeah, and you know, I can. Um, the the good thing about baseball, though, I gotta say, especially when you compare them to. The other three major sports is um, the thing about baseball is like I feel like that's actually the sport where you can social distance much easier. Yeah. Because everyone is spread out in the field. Like there really is very little contact in baseball, at least compared to okay. I mean, there's still there's still like there's still an amount of contact, obviously, especially when you know the catcher is trying to tag the base runner out and everything. But um, I'd say there's definitely less less contact in in baseball than all the other three sports to be honest and and especially because you know you play baseball outside so i think that's also a really big that's a very key factor um and and you're right you don't you know you don't want to invite all the same big fenway crowds that were like hanging out like grabbing hot dogs outside of the park or anything like that but um <clears throat> but you know it's a uh, i think baseball is definitely more definitely the most doable i think when it comes to you know covid times and everything i feel like they you know i i feel like they'll have a good plan for it so again like with everything else we shall see yeah I think that's what really what it really comes I mean, down more speculation. to speculation yeah <laughs> we have all we have right now is pure speculation no answer so yep. uh, you know exactly. a lot remains to be seen um mm -hmm. But yeah, so definitely, like I said, just a lot of big differences, yes. you know, as a p compared to what it would normally look like from March through now to what it actually has looked like. And so we'll see, you know, sort of if things sort of slowly start to sort of get back to the look that they 
that we're used to or how that how that all works out you know it's really what it comes down to so yeah, hope for the best <laughs> hope, we gotta hope for the best um all right so we are now going to move on to sort of the uh, the end portions of our mm. episodes and we'll start with kyle who i can actually <laughs> point to as opposed to point to a computer screen which is kind of nice um, with another edition of the Sue's Reviews. Kyle, what you got? So this week I want to talk about um, a show I had really gotten into uh, that's on Netflix. And you can also find it on uh, YouTube, I believe. I think it was like one of the YouTube original shows, <laughs> something like that. But it's the it's the Karate Kid follow-up show called Cobra Kai. <laughs> it was one of those shows. Yeah, I know, right? It was one of those shows where... I, I saw the trailer for it, and it did absolutely nothing for me. I thought this was just going to be a lame cash grab show that they're trying to get people to get the YouTube membership or whatever for. But then when I saw you know, I saw it, it moved on to Netflix. And then more and more I heard people actually recommend the show. They said, no, Kyle, trust us. It's, it's a really good show. Including, I was about to ask, uh, yeah. <laughs> or I was about to say, one in particular. Yeah, and I think that was kind of the fi final nail for me because I had, you know, heard, uh, you know. Well, hold on, you have, you have to you have to tell who the one in particular was. Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, and <laughs> you can't just leave it out there like a cliffhanger. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Oh, I'll, don't worry, I'll, I will definitely get to that. Um, so it's funny because like, bef you know, before I had, you know, heard just like, you know, you know, I had some, heard some pretty good reviews, but then after Robbie and I had gone to, uh, Craigville House of Pizza. And Cambridge was, House of Pizza. Oh, Craigville House of Pizza. <laughs> oh my God. I'm getting two pizza plays mixed up. <laughs> Classic. Um, <laughs> so after we went to Cambridge House of Pizza, um. In Centerville. No, I'm just in kidding. <laughs> in Centerville, Cambridge, right? No. Um. Sorry. Couldn't resist. Um, so. You know, uh, we had talked to the, uh, you know, the guy at the uh, the front desk there who was um, taking our orders, and he, it was so funny because he, we were just talking on and on about movies while we were waiting for our food, and um, and and he uh, and he and he literally that was the one show he recommended to me. He was like, if you haven't seen that show, you need to, and I was like, okay, I uh, I will definitely check it out. That was it. That was the final nail. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm I'm actually gonna see the show now. And I finally did, and I honestly, I, I really did enjoy it. Um, I was still very skeptical at first. I was like, oh, I don't know if this will work, you know. But what I really like about it, and this is a very kind of like, because, you know, they're, they're doing a lot of, like, revivals and stuff like that. They have, like, the Full House revival, and they did Twin Peaks Fuller revival. House. Oh, Full House. <laughs> yeah, right. So they have, they have all these, like, sequel shows, and I hadn't really watched any of those yet. They're also reviving Borat continue oh yeah well that's yeah <laughs> well that was inevitable i'm sure <laughs> but uh um uh but the, the 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 way i like the reason why i liked cobra kai was they took a very different approach to it so it's not yeah. just like a sequel to karate kid where they just like repeat all the famous scenes from the the movies and everything like that no it actually the, what i really liked about it was the so this time around um i don't know if you guys have ever seen the karate kid um series it's a really great series um ralph macchio starred in it and there were a lot of other great stars including pat morita who is his sensei who helped him stand up to bullies well this time around the bully character that bullied him in the very first movie is actually the main character in this show and what's really cool is that you actually get to see it from his perspective and they kind of make him a bit more of a sympathetic character this time around and um, you kind of see where they both ended up. And, he, you know, the, this whole match from him losing the match. Sorry, spoiler alert from uh, the first Karate Kid. Um, him losing the match. I mean, I'm sure you guys would have probably guessed that anyways. Um, but him losing the match pretty much, you know, put a big downer in his life. And he kind of went all downhill from there. And he's just kind of this, like, this like in, in, in a really bummer state. Um, but what happens is, you know, he actually ends up, uh, he befriends this kid um, because he actually sees him get attacked by these bullies from his high school. So he kind of almost, like, plays a little bit of a Miyagi kind of role, just like Miyagi defended, um, Ralph Macchio's character from Bullies. Mm -hmm. And I really like that, actually. I really like that approach. And the whole season is him about him bringing back Cobra Kai, because that was the rival dojo that Ralph Macchio was, uh, fighting against in, in, in the movie. So I really like that approach. I thought, um, all the actors are great. Ralph Macchio obviously comes back, too. But this time, it's funny because the roles are kind of reversed a bit. He's not really a bully, but he's kind of a bit more obnoxious in this one. 
um, but he still has a good heart. But it's it's just funny because you kind of get to see like how they've really changed from when they were teenagers to the to adults. And that's all I'm gonna say. Um, I don't want to spoil too much of the show because it really is a great show and it gets into a lot of great points, um, great story elements, and. If you really are looking for a show to watch, it, it's it's pretty quick show to get through anyways. There's only about 10 episodes per season. There's two seasons out right now. 10 episodes, and it's only about like half an hour. So you nice. guys can really fly through the show. And uh, so, yeah, I highly cool. recommend it. Nice. Well, thank you, Kyle, as always, <laughs> for that review and recommendation. And hopefully people will take you up on that. Thank you. Um, and so now, 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 yeah, words. Now <laughs> it is time for my segment, uh, end segment of the show, my Robbie's favorite slash fantasy football recap. We're going to start with the favorites this week. Um, the Boston College Eagles won this past Saturday, defeating Pittsburgh in overtime over at home to go to 3-1 and one on the season. So a big win for uh, first-year head coach Jeff Halfley and crew as they nice. get back on track after a tough loss to North Carolina. And so now they will be making the trek down south to Blacksburg, Virginia oh, wow. to take on Virginia Tech on Saturday night. So good luck to the Eagles as they uh, they head into the what is always a tough place to play in Lane Stadium. And the Patriots, mm. they actually did not have a game this past weekend. They were supposed to have a game this past weekend. Oh, yeah. But <laughs> due to some, uh, some positive tests, as we were talking about earlier, uh, the game got postponed, so the game is actually going to be this week <laughs> on Sunday afternoon um, at Gillette Stadium, mm -hmm. where the Patriots will be looking to bounce back from their loss against Kansas City and try and get back <clears throat> above 500. So, will they do it? We shall see. Um, <laughs> now to the fantasy football recap. I actually, I'm very happy to report that I got my first fantasy victory of the season yes, this go past Robbie. week. Uh, I'd started out 0-4 and, and was, you know, was not doing well, but I got, I picked up the victory this week, 169-140. to 140. There you go. Deshaun Watson had a big game for me, 50 points. Um, <clears throat> Dalvin Cook had a big game of 20 points. Um, Kareem Hunt had 19. Baltimore's defense had 30 points for me. Wow. So, uh, like I said, just a very, uh, overall impressive performance. So, I'm hoping to sort of ride the ride the wave and uh you know like sort of put, it, put together a yeah, sort of a, a winning streak here coming up and so let's you know wish me luck as i look to look to go to two and four this week and hopefully we'll have some mm -hmm. more positive fantasy news for you uh mm -hmm. in our next episode so there you go. uh that's gonna wrap it up wrapping it up for this week's edition of on a couch talking sports uh well, I thank everybody as always for joining us. Always appreciate it. And uh, as always, he's Kyle. Yeah. I'm Robbie. This is a car. Yeah. And uh, we'll see you next time on iCast Hockey Sports. Bye, everybody. We'll be all right.